I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin in my garden going on sort of a treasure hunt. Two years ago in January of 17, I was sent a dozen mangave hybrids by Walters Gardens in Zeeland, Michigan. It was a pleasant surprise and I was scrambling to find a spot for them in my already rather full garden. Uh, but I knew that some I wanted in pots, some I wanted in the ground. You know, roots can really expand and grow and flourish in the ground, so that's pretty important. But you also maybe want to have these plants in pots so that you can move and protect them and make sure that they don't get conditions that are difficult for them. Uh, these are somewhat engulfed by the aeoniums, but they're doing well. Texas privet that lets in a lot of dappled light and uh, they're tilted somewhat toward the sun but they don't seem sun starved and they're getting enough sun to bring out their their marvelous variegation look at those spots and dots and freckles which is a characteristic of this genus mangave which is an agave manfreda cross and they're all new for the 21st century and this is a Manfreda, a lily-like relative of agaves. Ruffled, wavy, wiggly, almost spider-like leaves. Very happy in an area of my garden that gets uh, bounced sunlight from a wall and it's sheltered. I was a little concerned that it might not like our hot summers and get burned and disappear. But so far, it's just been a real show place Plant. This is Lavender Lady, and I planted it in that lavender pot. Man of Steel, and you can see some of that stiff-leaved agave heritage in it. The speckling is characteristic of mangave, so as I was going around the garden looking for these dozen plants, I was looking for speckles. Then I looked on my list, silvery and kind of wide-leaved like ovatifolia. But where are the speckles? I see some down in there, some red freckles. It's got to be daunting to be a plant hybridizer and know that you want to create these beautiful crosses, but you don't really know what they're going to look like. Will they sell? It has almost a reptilian look, almost an iridescence to the leaves. It's sort of a purpley blue. I don't think it's for everyone, but I like how it's combining with my aeoniums that have burgundy rim on their leaves. And this one is Kaleidoscope. I'm learning what I probably should have done differently to make these plants attain their full potential. This one was so beautiful when it was in a pot getting more sun, but here it's gotten longer leaves and it's lost some of its color. If I were to do it again, I would give it more sun and enjoy it's phenomenal coloration. Well, one of them that was on the packing list was a mangave catch a wave. This is what it must be, but it looks just like gypsophila to me. Agave gypsophila is one of the parents of the cultivar catch a wave. But what fooled me into thinking that it was just regular gypsophila is that there aren't any speckles, which are so typical. Uh, the freckling, the red freckling, are so typical of uh, mangaves. This is my fault for planting it in a shady location where its leaves have gotten long, stretching for the light, and it hasn't lived up to its full color potential. It's happy here, it's even offset, but I'm not getting the full beauty of the plant, so I have to think about moving it. Mangave Carnival. Isn't it beautiful? This one has probably been the most disappointing because this is all the bigger it's gotten. It didn't like the summer heat and I was afraid I was going to lose it. And now we're in midwinter after the rains and it's really perked up. But like so many of these plants, uh, they've been bred to not be spiky and thick leaved and pokey like their agave parents, but that sort of leaves them with these these tender, very uh, easily broken and easily damaged leaves, plus their snail candy. So if you're going to grow them, you might consider just doing it in pots where you can protect them from the open garden and all the, the things that can come along crashing through. Mm -hmm.